regardless of who got here, that ground. Everyone. Each person, and he is loose and desired, received sin, and sin received every good coming down from. Father, we opportunity to gather together. I pray that you have ears. And my seems to. that you would thank you Question for you. Have you ever been presented reality that something fact not true? I'm seeing a few head nods. That can be a difficult thing to come to terms with. Just a couple of examples. This first one. What would you think if I said that... Um, other bird, if a if a baby bird has been pushed out of the nest or fallen out of the nest, if you put that baby bird back, that mother bird will accept that mother bird will accept that young. I've heard that that's they won't, but I mean, birds really don't have a good sense of smell, and so I'm not really sure the bird would ever really know or not. Another example, now that you're all awake and paying. Would you think if I said that it is a myth that the taste zones on your tongue really can taste all flavors? There's not really one zone for bitter or sweet or sour, but all taste buds can taste different types. To challenge something that you think or know to be true. Here's one that's kind of uh, maybe even bump up against a little bit more culturally where we are today. What would you say if I said it was a myth? 
that you need diets or supplements to detoxify. I mean, the liver and the kidneys do that automatically. Need diets or supplements. And toxin exists. Gotten rid of. Throughout Scripture, from time to time, we're presented with some things that we know to be true and seem like they're not really what they were. The question is, what do you do? That may be the struggle that we have in some places this morning, dealing with this idea of temptation. James in chapter 1, beginning at verse 13, he shifts to a mode of strong warning. This form of exhortation is designed to, to draw us in, to call in his audience. The root of the problem, as we're going to see in this passage, is James here introduces a fact about the cause of misunderstanding, self-deception. Here James contributes one of the, the most piercing discussions of the nature of temptation. In he also introduces a little bit of ambiguity. For example, where do trials come from? Are some from God, not others? Are they all from God? And if not, how can we say that he rules the universe? Are all trials from God and therefore his goodness is compromised? These are some of the things that James introduces us to. The basic meaning of the word tempted is tried or tested or, or proving. And depending on the context, can have a negative or a positive meaning. In chapter 1, verse 12, the word is used in sense of trials or testings. But here in verse 13 and 14, the idea is clearly of temptation, of solicitation to evil. James is dealing with this entirely different concept here. The same word is used for both ideas, but because the primary difference is not in the word itself, that's in a, re a person's response to that. Here's what I mean by that. Yeah, if a believer responds in faithful obedience to God's word, he has successfully endured a trial. If he succumbs to it in the flesh, doubting God and disobeying, he is tempted into sin. The response of the person here really dictates more of how this word is used. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 13. No temptation has ever taken you that is not common to man. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted. But with the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape. Able. A right response leads to spiritual endurance, righteousness, wisdom, and other blessings. A wrong response leads to sin and to death. No person, including the most spiritual Christian, can escape temptation. I saw in a, um, a quote Opportunity may knock just once. Temptation leans on the doorbell. It's always there. Always vying for your attention, for your affection. Even the Lord in his humanity was tempted, and we just saw this in our responsive reading. In Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1, then Jesus was led by the Spirit up to the wilderness tempted. So this isn't really a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And then the second great matter is, how am I going to respond when that happens? Will I respond to that as a testing 
or will I respond to that as a temptation luring me into sin and death? Just as it is common for man to be tempted, many times it is also common for him to blame someone else. We see this in the beginning, right? I mean, what did Adam say? When God called Adam and said, how did you respond to this temptation? The man said, the woman that you gave me, she gave me the fruit, and I ate it. He, had, he did at least admit that he ate it, but the cause for the temptation, well, that, that, that came from you. And his wife, Eve, following his lead, and the Lord said to the woman, what is it that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. James, here in this passage, opposes the intolerable idea of blaming God. Declaring in verse 13, let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. The, the idea there is, is let no person say to himself, that is rationalized to himself, that when he is tempted, I'm being tempted by God. The very idea of that, the thought of that is an abomination. James is telling us. James is saying that no one should say that God even indirectly is responsible for tempting me evil. God is in no way and in no degree responsible directly or indirectly for our being tempted. Have we bumped up against anything that you thought James may be telling us not be true? In his fierce opposition to the ungodly rationalization of blaming God for sending enticements to evil, James gives four long proofs that God is not responsible. And even, for, he's not responsible for our temptation and even less responsible, that is, if it were possible, for our succumbing to that temptation. We're going to take a look at verses 13 through 17 in these four Nature of evil, 13, the latter part of verse 13. Nature of man, nature of lust, verses 15 and 16, and then the nature of God in verse 17. We're going to, we get to the nature of lust, we're going to spend a little bit more of our time there discussing how are we, temp what does temptation look like for us? In verse 13, James says, For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. Cannot be tempted here carries the idea of untemptable. I'm not, not positive that's a word, but it explains the idea. Untemptable. There is a an idea here that is described throughout, it, it's kind of the same as being invincible. To the assaults of evil. There are two mutually exclusive, most complete sense. God and evil exist in two completely different realms, distinct realms, and they can never meet. He is aware of evil, cannot be touched by evil. Remember in Isaiah, Isaiah stood mesmerized in this passage, one called to the other, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. This is who God is. Shortly after he instituted the covenant at Sinai, the Lord commanded Moses, reminded him. Leviticus chapter 19. Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. God repeats this command to the church in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. Since it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. His holiness is eternal. 
It's unmixed with anything less than pure, perfect righteousness. It's almost unfathomable to try to describe his holiness. In our responsive reading of the testing of Jesus in the wilderness, the difference between testing and temptation can be seen here. The same distinction seen in the first chapter of Jesus. Matthew reports Jesus was led up by the Spirit to be into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. The remainder of the count of Matthew chapter 4 makes it clear that from Satan's perspective, this experience was intended as a temptation, as an inducement to sin. For Jesus, the experience was a test. He passed without the least wavering. Despite Satan's clever use of God's word, he did not succeed, even in the slightest. God allows trials not to solicit sin, move them greater and sometimes even to prove to us where we are. Sometimes maybe feel wickedness lies with. Next, let's look at the nature of man in verse four. I'm sorry, verse 14. James 1. But each one is tempted. He is carried away and enticed by his own lust. This second evidence that God is not responsible for our temptation to sin is our own nature. Second, James, God is not responsible. That fall spiritual. In the same way that Cessna succumbed to temptation, cause us, especially. Must bring to this could lust for things that that are sin. Sin can look attractive, pleasurable. Have little power. Satan tries to make sin as Activism. make righteous good more things of the world healing speaking of self Christian Beginning in verse it says, I know that is my in my the good I do not I practice the I do not want. I do not sin, I find then the 
present in Aging, making me a prisoner of He deals with seeing desires to do, finds himself doing the very things that he does not want to do. Jeremiah 17. Matthew chapter things that proceed out of the mouth come from the out of the save me body of death. Praise be. Evil be. proof that God is must sin do not be deceived. sin James you metaphor deception So fire has. Is it possible? Painting an awful picture of. And that makes can unlock external in. Sin, self, serious.
man's promise. It develops. As we develop, gain our us to sin. Something we see suddenly grabs our draws us out strong have it and it happens just that Next step. Think about a desire and justification. It's a feeling. Second part. How our mind gave. This is virtually part of the process of we don't have to tell our minds to rational because they are all but exception because the this is the stage where has been, and been rational now consciously sued matter of start to be made to fulfill rationalize That which is rational the gen team every good every coming day
comes from. Perfect. Speak in everyone. Ask for James and He's already identified himself with them in the battle. He's not standing out saying message to say, listen, guys, you've got to be careful. There's an enemy that desires to devour you. You need to resist temptation. Avoiding the Battle on the second cream. Testimony that whole godly. Not coming to
mess with them. If they ever audit me, I want them to owe me. Take that other. What's my attitude toward temptation? Is it the same? No. I never try to stay as far as I can away from the law. I always want to get as close to I want to rationalize in my mind where, where sin. I mean, where, where's the, if I do this? Is it? Only the Christian who that Another take. Battle money. I, I just. Daily. We must be. instead of rational. Jesus didn't sit down and rationalize and say, Satan, come over here. Let's talk about this in a minute. Now, here's what I'm thinking. He set forth. Gathering. How can I be sure that my mind Why we meet to pray to be here. See there. Christ you know how to abide. Don't automatic. I pray. Switch. That's why. Age.
like I, I every Excellent. How do we do? Hampshire. Better under. Thank you. Oh, the giver. Yes. 
sack. Whatever deal. Speak with me, anybody else. 